<laughs> I've been reading stories on your website for a few years now, and I figure I might as well share some of the experiences which have occurred to me and members of my family, as well as friends. My grandparents have lived in their home for about 45 years now, and she often looks after family and friends when they are ill. My great-grandmother and my great-uncle have both passed away in their home, one in 1979 and the other in 1993. My mother especially can always feel my great-grandmother's presence in the basement, where my grandparents had stored the rocking chair, which has been there since she was staying at their home and is still there today. You just get an overwhelming feeling that there's someone sitting on the chair, although has never scared any of us. When my two sisters and I were younger, we spent every weekend and a few weeks each summer at my grandparents' place. One time, my older sister and I had been chatting about the house being haunted, and my grandfather got very upset about that. My sister made the comment that she wished that the ghosts would prove they were in fact there. We left to go grocery shopping, and when we returned approximately two hours later, there were two cups out of the cupboard. We had put all the dishes away before going, and the way they were situated on the floor, it was apparent they had fallen. One was a plastic cup which ended up being fine, and the other one was glass which had broken. In fact, there were pieces of glass embedded in the floor through the carpet. We knew that they could have fallen on their own because the cupboards were all closed. And my grandmother stacks her mugs and glasses in stacks of four or five. So there was absolutely no way to explain how two fell. And the cupboard doors were shutting behind them. There was nobody who could have done it. My parents do not have the keys to enter my grandparents' place, and my uncle was in Buffalo, New York, and we live in Ottawa, Ontario. My father thinks that my sister got her wish, and she has never made a request like that again. We have no idea how to go about checking the history of our house, but we do believe that our property was once connected to our neighbors. My older sister woke up one night, a few months after we moved in, when she opened her eyes, she saw a boy. She said he looked to be about 10 and was standing in the center of the room. He was wearing a baseball cap and a t-shirt. The way she described it is that he looked real. He wasn't transparent and there was no glow about him. He just looked at her. And she rubbed her eyes because she couldn't believe what she had seen. Then rolled over the face away from him and went to sleep. My mother was telling our neighbor about what my sister saw, and the neighbor commented that it sounded like her ghost. Her husband had seen a little boy he described the same as my sister in their attic the day they moved in. Our ghost doesn't bother anyone often, and my big sister is the only one who has ever seen him. We can all feel his presence when he is around. We have a sunroom which had been a garage that the previous owners had converted, which we use as a bedroom. The only place a bed can fit properly to allow people to walk around the room is to place it under the window. So you are literally right at the same height as the windowsill. That room gets very hot during the summer and stays very cold in the winter. We can never get the temperature right, which is a duct problem. The window pretty much stays open throughout the summer, so anyone there can feel if there is wind coming in or not. Anyway. My younger sister, it's her bedroom, has been woken up by the sound of the gate opening and slamming shut on the front porch on a windless night. This doesn't happen very often in our living room and dining room area, which we use as a computer room. It has older windows with the sliding locks on both sides that have to be pressed in to open or close the windows. My younger sister and my mother were in the living room one day when it started the rain. Mom told my sister to help her close the window so no rain gets inside. When they both heard the windows in the computer room start closing, and when they went to get a better look, sure enough, both windows were closed. We live in a bungalow, and there are no walls separating the rooms, only an archway, so they couldn't see the windows. However, 
they definitely would have seen if anyone had been in the room. I used to work six days a week, starting at 5.30 a.m. With Saturdays being a starter shift, so I would usually leave at about 9 or 10 a.m. I would go home and take a nap most Saturdays. My bedroom is in the basement, which is separated into two rooms, a rec room and laundry area, then walking in through those rooms and turning right to go into the very back of the basement is my bedroom. I got home one Saturday and went to lie down. My mom was also lying down in her room, and her room is at the top of the basement staircase. We were the only two home. She heard the front door open and footsteps walking around. She figured it was my father or one of my sisters. Whoever came in decided to come down into the basement, open my bedroom door, lie down behind me, and squeeze me. I was so confused, but not in any way paralyzed or afraid. I was too tired to open my eyes and see if anyone was there but I remember being squeezed pretty tightly. Then the squeezer got up, left my room, and both my mother and I heard the footsteps going up the stairs, then out the front door. I had to use the washroom, so I got up and ended up meeting my mom at the top of the stairs. I scared her because she thought she heard a bag rustling as the footsteps had come upstairs, and she thought it was me leaving the house. We looked outside, and our car was the only one in our driveway. No one else had come home at all, so we had no idea who it could have been, or why it would have wanted to hug or squeeze me. My sister had gotten a helium-filled balloon for her birthday one year, and it was just hanging in the corner on the ceiling in our computer room. I was awake one night surfing the net, when I got the distinct impression that something was right behind me. So then I turned around and came face to face with her balloon. It really freaked me out because it had been floating on the ceiling and it had to lower to the height of a person sitting and cross the room where it floated just level with my head. I popped the balloon that night. My sister has heard dishes being thrown into the sink at night when she got home from work and one night saw the shadow of a person looking out into the living room window. When she got home, she walked into the house and discovered everyone sleeping in their bedroom. So she doesn't have a clue as to who had been in the window. She called her boyfriend to come and get her because she didn't want to be the only one awake that night. I apologize for the length of this email. As I've mentioned, it is not the most active of hauntings. In fact, no one has really felt uncomfortable before in our home. I still have years of experiences to tell you about. Maybe I'll email again sometime. In 1989, I lived as a single mom in a two-story townhome. This was in Brea, Kentucky. My bedroom was upstairs and had one window overlooking my front door and the parking lot. David, my next door neighbor who shared his porch with me, one small cement porch with one step up leading to his door into mine. He was number seven and I was number eight. One time early between two and three o'clock, I had just startled myself awake after a disturbing dream. I just finished writing it all down in a dream journal and had turned off my bedside lamp. I lay there in darkness with my bedroom window as a nightlight. A bit of streetlight shone through the slightly elevated shade, and if a car happened to go by, I'd see a quick flash of headlights roam through my bedroom walls. The roads were mostly empty, and it was all stillness outside. My window was partly open and I remember the sound of wind and an occasional instinct amidst all the quiet. It was summer, or maybe the end of summer, and the fresh air smelled like honeysuckle. As I lay there trying to fall back asleep, I suddenly hear the low growl of a car engine in the parking lot below. It idled for a few minutes, 
and then turned off. There was silence. Next, the click of a door handle. Then the sound of a door creaking open and slamming shut. I heard shoes hitting the pavement. They had loud distinct heels on them, pacing each step like I would imagine a sharply dressed woman would do. Clop, clop, coming closer to David and my porch. They made a distinct noise, which echoed in the night air. They walked just below my window. I wondered if the person would knock on David's door, or mine. There was a pregnant pause as I listened for the knock. I guessed the knock would be on David's door, as he was a big late night partier and had frequently night friends. The knock came on my door. I heard it loud and bellowing through my open window from right below it, and simultaneously, it echoed through my apartment knocks on my front door, sharp and determined. I immediately leaped out of bed and was at the window for a few seconds later. I yelled down to the visitor, I'll be right there. I had several friends or family it could be, despite this odd hour, so I wasn't concerned. I turned from the window and bounded down my stairs, in the dark, and sprung open my front door. I opened it part way, and then all the way. Only darkness, just an empty porch. There was no car in the parking lot, as far as my eyes could see. Wind howled through the trees. It just shrieked past my door and blew branches across the pavement. I shuddered, not from cold, but from the lightning bolt of the creepy chills that were traveling like ice down my spinal cord. I shut the door again and then locked it. Then I stood there for a minute or two and checked the lock again. Slowly I moved again, back up the stairs again, taking each step backward, keeping watch my front door, then stood there for a minute or two and checked the lock again. I moved slowly back up the stairs again, taking each step up backward, keeping my watch on my front door. About four years ago when I lived with my mother and her boyfriend in an apartment, I was sleeping on the love seat in the living room, and I had a stack of pillows and blankets close to my head. It was about 12 a.m., and suddenly the pillows and blankets fell over. I shrugged it off. There were a lot of pillows and blankets, and the pile was a bit lopsided. That was, until I got up in the morning. When I woke up, I saw that the pillows and blankets had been made into a little pallet on the floor next to me. Also, in that apartment, it was about 10 p.m. I was trying to get some sleep, and I saw a lady in one of those button-up high-collared dresses from a long time ago. I was a little bit freaked, but when I saw her, I was so scared, but kind of happy to see her anyway. Also, about two years ago, I was living in a home with my father and my stepmother. And I was walking to my room, and that's when I saw a blonde lady laying on our couch. She was wearing a long, light blue dress. At first, I thought it might have been my stepmother. Then I realized that she didn't have a light, long blue dress. That was when I looked back, and the lady wasn't there anymore. And my stepmother was all the way at the other end of the house on the computer. This time, it happened to my father. He was sitting in his chair watching television, and for some reason he looked behind him and saw this little old lady with her hands in her hips, giving him a disproving look. I'd also see things disappear and turn up in weird places. At first I thought I'd done it. I'm always leaving stuff in odd places, like my shoes in the bathroom behind the towels. But then I realized even I didn't leave things in that weird of places. Once I lost my house keys, I knew I'd left them on my bed, and I was getting ready for bed, and I was getting all the crap off my bed. I realized that my keys weren't there. I looked for them for days, but I never even found them. That is until about six months later. We were moving out of the house, and my dad was moving the big desk out of my room, and there were my keys. 
There is no way that it could have kicked them under the desk by accident. It had this weird decoration on the front. The only way that it could have gotten there was from the back. And that was also impossible. My desk was too close to the wall for that. This also happened to my father a few months ago. It was really late at night. Or really early in the morning. I don't know, but my father woke up. And then he saw his father standing in his room. He called my aunt, and she told him what happened. This happened about five months ago to me. I was sitting in the church during the prayer. I don't know why, but I looked up, and I saw my best friend's dad standing right there, which I knew to be impossible, because he had been dead for about two years before the occurrence. This happened about four months ago. I was really late. I mean really late. I was having trouble trying to sleep. And I was looking at my window. Or rather glaring. But yeah. I was glaring at my window. And I looked at the end of the bed. And saw this weird demon looking creature. Anyways. I totally freaked. I mean... You don't see these weird little creatures every day, you know. Well, ever since I've seen this thing, my favorite clothes have been disappearing. At first, I thought they might have been under my bed or in my closet. But they're not. There's nothing under my bed. And I've been through my closet twice. Do you know what that little freaky creature might have been? About three months ago, I was at my friend's, and they have crosses everywhere. I mean everywhere. The reason being is that they have problems. These weird glowing like orb ghost things. While my friend and her sister and I were sitting on her bed, we were just talking about Stephen King movies and then I say, have you seen it? And then we hear a creepy voice that says yes. We freaked out. We all jumped into the middle of the bed and didn't move for a long time. While the glowing orbs or thingies that we mentioned are supposed to be ghosts, I suppose. Because, like, a lot of people have died in that house. My friend was up late one night, watching TV, and she looks out her window, and she sees three glowing heads. Well, one day, I had come home with her after school, so she could give me a ride to church. I put my backpack in the middle of her bed, and sat on the floor. That way I could watch some televisions before we could go. That's when she was on the other side of the room, by the window, where she saw the glowing heads. And all of a sudden, my backpack flies off the bed and into her closet. It was more like it moved a little bit. And suddenly it was in her closet. It's kind of hard to explain. About a year ago, I was in my friend's grandmother's bathroom. My friend had to shave her legs. And that's when I see this old dog lying on the floor. And that's when I asked, Did you have a dog that died? And she was like, yeah. How do you know? Then that's when I said, Because it's lying there right on the floor underneath the sink. Turns out that they have several portals, so to speak, in her house. And then there's a ghost in a Ouija board. We don't mess with that. While I was stationed in Germany, I got married to my wife in Denmark. We stayed in a little nice hotel that was built in the 1400s. We stayed a total of three nights and never had a problem until the last night. Late in the last night, I was lying in bed with my new wife. We were both facing a wall away from the door. I said something along the lines of, I'll always keep you safe. And at that moment, an overwhelming fear came over me. At the same time, my wife said, why did you just say that? It had no real reason. But she described to me that she was feeling the same thing I was. And we were able to determine that the source of our unexplained fear was coming from the doorway right behind us. 
Neither I nor my wife wanted to turn to see if anything was there. When I finally mustered up the courage to look, I was convinced that I was going to be looking directly into the eyes of the devil. But nothing was there, and shortly after the fear subsided, I have jumped out of planes and been to combat twice, but I never felt as scared as I was that night. There once was a man with a spoon, and because he didn't give his spoon away to everybody, he wouldn't be able to subscribe, chill out, share the video, and like, comment, and subscribe. And now, if you don't subscribe this moment, if you don't share the video, and if you don't comment your favorite story, I will start singing. I'll do it. I'm a threatening man, and I won't hesitate. One, two, three, come on and share. Subscribe right now. Do it right now. Comment. I'm about to do it. I'm about to sing. Potatoes are hungry for your soul. I told you, I said I was going to do something nonsensical and I was going to do it. Okay, I'm leaving now. Did you subscribe? Did you comment? Did you like? Did you share? Okay, I'm going. But I love you guys who subscribe. And I just stuttered. Did I stutter? Yes, I did. Bye. Love you guys.